Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The winter storm warning and the watch has been expanded as well as extended. Cover San Antonio right now and it looks like some of the heaviest is yet to come. All right, thank you, Mike. And so far this morning, nearly 1,000 flights are canceled due to the winter storm. Some of those here in San Antonio. We'll get an update on how many are affected at San Antonio International and what Southwest Airlines is saying about the situation. Two additional Memphis police officers now relieved of duty and other first responders that night now fired in the Tyree Nichols case. I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Memphis with those details and more ahead. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday, January 31st. Thanks for joining us. We'll check back with Mike and check in with Sarah Spivey in Bernie just a minute. But first, we are keeping an eye on school closures and delays. You can scan this QR code to take you directly to that list on KSET.com. That includes colleges and our area schools. Most of the impacted districts are in the Hill Country. And we're going to be showing you the list of districts on the ticker at the bottom of your screen. For now, let's go ahead and check in with Mike. And yeah, it is a messy morning out there. I only saw a little bit of light rain near downtown. Mark, you said you saw some uh, freezing rain and some ice on your uh, your vehicle parked outside. Now the winter storm warning, like I said, has been expanded. It now covers San Antonio, Bear County, and then counties down to the southeast. And then the watch was pushed out ahead of that to cover in toward the uh, hill. Excuse me, the uh, coastal plain. Hill Country, of course, is uh, continuing to be under the winter storm warning. It's also been expanded now through 6 o'clock Thursday morning. It had been going up until noon tomorrow, but it looks like the rain is going to continue on. Speaking of which, here's what it looks like. First of all, the close up. Yeah, it covers all of the area. Now, that doesn't mean all of, say, San Antonio is going to be seeing freezing rain. Right now, we are seeing some on the north side of town. Uh, a lot of this is maybe just a little bit of uh, some light rain, a little bit further down to the south and this is covering up there just to the north of 1604 up and toward Ball Verde, New Braunfels, everything sliding up to the north and then a little bit further up to the north and west and this will continue. Now, the freezing line, that's the obviously the big thing we have to keep watching and that just about cuts right through Bear County and this is not really going to be changing all that much. We'll continue to stay well below freezing up to the north and it's going to be sort of going back and forth here in Bear County over the next, say, 24 to 36 hours. And then we've got a little bit of a wind chill to deal with on top of that. Mold is high. Mountain cedar is moderate. If indeed there is school today, it is going to be cold, a little bit of freezing rain, and then also later on today, temperatures aren't going to be warming up much. Like I said, I think the worst is yet to come. More on that in just a minute. Sarah Spivey is out in Bernie. Good morning, Sarah. What's going on? Hey, Mike, good morning. Yes, we're in beautiful downtown Bernie right now, and there is some freezing mist falling as I speak. It's kind of that driving mist that's very light, but there's enough of it to cause some glazes on elevated surfaces right now in Bernie. Now, here's the thing. The streets are fine in Bernie because the temperature is above freezing. This is a look at the temperature right now, close to about 40 degrees. I'm using this infrared thermometer, but we have been seeing throughout the morning uh, ice on elevated surfaces like this metal pole here. You can see that the metal pole is actually well below freezing in places. It might have warmed up recently just because I've been standing next to it, but I've taken a couple of readings here and it's uh, 29 degrees at times. So those elevated surfaces are below freezing, even though the roads are warm right now we are going to be at or below freezing here in Bernie for at least the next day or so and so we expect those road temperatures to come down and in the coming days especially tonight and tomorrow significant icing is possible here in Bernie and across all of the hill country that would lead to some power outages so we're going to be out here in Bernie all morning long keeping track of things and in fact as, as conditions worsen tonight and into tomorrow we'll be keeping an eye on things as well reporting live in Bernie meteorologist Sarah Spivey Stephen how are those roads 
Hey, good morning, Sarah. Stay warm out there. Well, thankfully, the roads have been quiet, at least for right now. You can see Tenant Ralph Fair, a little bit of a glistening shot there from Transguide, and really, we're picking up a few of those droplets there at Loop 410 at FM 78. A lot of these Transguide cameras are showing that same image, just some droplets, which are not really causing any issues on the roads just yet, but we are keeping a very close eye on things. Now, I did speak to our friends over at Transguide a few minutes ago, and I can tell you, no reports of any bridges or overpasses, uh, closures, I should say, so that's some good news news. We take you to the map and thankfully we're starting this morning off with a very quiet start here in town. But of course, we're going to be watching the roads closely throughout the morning, but there's still going to be several active road closures. So just be on the lookout for those text dot crews. We know some of the crews were actually out there just kind of pre treating the roads to make sure that we didn't see any ice buildup on any of those bridges or overpasses. So just make sure to watch out for those, those crews. They're going to be out there again a little bit later this morning. But for right now, 10 at days of Allah, just a very quiet start on this roadway. But nonetheless, make sure you Use caution, especially if you plan on heading out the door in the next few minutes. Mark stuff. Stephen, thank you very much. Uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed for a safe morning commute. We're also keeping an eye on San Antonio's International Airport right now. According to the airport's website, seven departures have been canceled along with seven arrivals. Most of the flights are with Southwest Airlines. Southwest sent out a statement saying it expects the impact to last through tomorrow, so be sure to keep up with any of your flights. Southwest also saying it's waiving additional charges for changing flights through Wednesday. All day today, you can track the weather on your phone. Just scan the QR code to download that KSET weather app. All the data is put in by our local meteorologist, so it's tailored to our area. So if needed, our meteorologists will also do special webcasts that are also available through this weather app. Well, turning to other news this morning, the latest in the Tyree Nichols case. Three responding Memphis fire personnel have been terminated. Two Memphis police officers have been relieved of their duties. And as ABC's Justin Finch reports, one of them has just been identified, and Nichols' parents are asking why he's not also facing charges. Memphis police announcing two more officers are relieved of duty as his probe into Tyree Nichols' death continues. One seen here trying to taser Nichols. Officer Preston Hemphill was on scene for that first January 7th confrontation between officers and Nichols, but not the second time when Nichols was tackled and beaten. After learning Nichols was found nearby, Hemphill heard saying, oh, stop it. Hemphill now on leave pending an investigation. I think that all of them should pay, uh, along with the white officer, that was tasing my son. Five Memphis police officers fired and facing second degree murder charges. Attorneys for two of them say their clients intend to plead not guilty. And Memphis police tell ABC News those two additional officers were not named initially because they were not fired. The department typically identifies officers relieved of duty after an investigation ends. Justin Finch, ABC News, Memphis. President Joe Biden informing Congress that he will end the twin national emergencies for addressing COVID-19 on May 11th. The move will formally restructure the federal coronavirus response. It will now treat the virus as an endemic threat to public health that can be managed through agencies' normal authorities. Comes as lawmakers have already ended elements of the emergencies that kept millions of Americans insured during the pandemic. Actress Cindy Williams has passed away. She was among the most recognizable stars in America in the 1970s and 1980s for her role as Shirley, opposite Penny Marshall's Laverne on the beloved sitcom Laverne and Shirley. The statement says Williams died in Los Angeles at the age of 75 on Wednesday after a brief illness. Now, Williams worked with some of Hollywood's most elite directors in a film career that preceded her full-time move to television. She was far best known for Laverne and Shirley and the Happy Days spinoff that, which was a Happy Days spinoff that ran from ABC from 1976 to 1983. 438, 32 degrees. A strong start for the Spurs last night against the Washington Wizards, but not a strong finish. Up next, we're going to get reaction from Coach Pop after the Wizards got their first win in SA since 1999. Outside with live cam, complete coverage of this winter weather event here in South Texas. So far, so good. Again, just some freezing drizzle or rain out there. If you take it easy, you're going to be okay. You're watching GMSA. 
Sports hosting the Wizards last night. San Antonio charges out with a lot of energy. First quarter, Kata Bates Diop steals the Wizards pass, gives it to Keldon Johnson, the other end, feeds it to Sohan for the slam dunk. Spurs lead 7 5. More Keldon pokes the bad pass right to Zach Collins, who passes to Trey Jones. Alleyoop with Sohan for the slam dunk and one. 21-15 SA had 15 points in the first quarter. Closing seconds, Stanley Johnson steals the inbound for some jam, and Spurs led 36-30 after one, but Washington won the second quarter, 33-19 to lead, 63-55 at halftime. All right, third quarter action. Spurs down seven. Malachi Branham steals the ball, passes ahead to lay up for Trey Jones, gets uh, Spurs within five. Down 14 now, Doug McDermott gets three of them back right there. San Antonio trailed 98-87 after three quarters. Fourth quarter, Sohan goes bounce past McDermott. He misses, but Zach Collins tips it in. Spurs trailed 104-96. Wizards hold strong to beat the Spurs 127-106 earning their first win in San Antonio since December of 1999 at the Alamo Dome. After the game, Coach Pop had only one comment. Well, they're doing, they're doing what they can. Uh, you know, it's one of those games. We have more fast break points. We had more second chance points. We had fewer turnovers. We had more points in the paint, uh, but shot 20 something from three and they shot, I don't know what it says, 50 or something like that. Game over. Good talk. Spurs will next host the Sacramento Kings tomorrow, 7 o'clock at the AT&T Center. Then they've got the Sixers and then adios to our Spurs as they head out of town for the rodeo road trip. Yeah, good luck to the Spurs. Go Spurs, go. Time now, 443 and 32 degrees for now. The growing family battle over Lisa Marie Presley's will. Just ahead, why her mother Priscilla is now contesting it. We're keeping an eye on school closures and delays. You can scan this QR code and it'll take you directly to our ongoing list at ksat.com. We're also showing you the list of districts affected in the ticker at the bottom of your screen. That'll be running all morning long right here on GMSA. Welcome back. It is 446. New details are emerging as Priscilla Presley contests the validity of Lisa Marie Presley's will. ABC's Trevor Alt has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, the growing family battle over Lisa Marie Presley's will. The singer-songwriter and the only daughter of Elvis Presley died earlier this month at age 54. Her mother Priscilla is now contesting her will, saying she should have access to the trust. After court documents revealed Lisa Marie removed Priscilla and her former business manager Brian Siegel in 2016. Priscilla Presley, in effect, says in her pleading that the signature on the alleged amendment is not Lisa Marie's. She says it doesn't look like her signature. Another problem is the fact that the alleged amendment wasn't witnessed by any anybody and it wasn't notarized. The amendment makes Lisa Marie's daughter, actress Riley Keough, the sole trustee, meaning Keough receives an inheritance worth millions. It's all coming up at 7 a.m. with your GMA First Look. I'm Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. All right, time check is 447 this morning. We have a look here at 10 at Comfort. Our friends at Transguide are able to get us a shot that further up on I-10. Now, this is just one of the few cameras that, unfortunately, is able to get us a look at the conditions out there. But you can see, even though it is a quiet roadway, we still have a few vehicles that are making their way on by. Now, the good news here is that we have not seen any reports of any bridges or overpasses that have been closed just yet. But we know Sarah Spivey is up in Bernie, and she's keeping us updated on the conditions out there this morning. But you can see obviously very dark. You want to make sure that you give yourself plenty of time this morning. Thankfully, here in town, we're not really catching a lot of issues, just a lot of green out there on the screen. We do have a few road closures, and we'll get to that a little bit later on, but that's related to construction. Thankfully, right now, the roads are quiet, but I was just checking the corner of my eye here at these Transguide cameras. It's still pretty uh, dark out there, and we do have a few droplets. Let's give you a quick look around town. Again, that's 10 at Comfort, a little bit further up on the northwest side, but as we give you a look there at 10 at De Zavala, things are moving just fine here in town. No reports of any crashes yet, but Mike, I did mention this to you during the commercial break. Austin Fire Department is at least reporting six related traffic accidents, uh, and they're saying this is all related to icing. Yeah, and uh, the one thing we were just uh, in market pointed out, that picture up there in comfort, was that a little bit of slush on the road? So what we need to look at, it's really hard to see with that camera. Okay, here's what radar is detecting as of right now. 
This is freezing precipitation. Now, this does not necessarily mean it's freezing on when it hits the surface, like Sarah was just pointing out up there in Bernie, where the road surface, because the ground is still fairly warm, you know, we were up in the mid 70s on Sunday, was at about 40 degrees. Now, and then that signpost right next to her was down around 30. That's the problem we're facing is the elevated surfaces. Now, here's what's going on in about the past oh hour or so and watch as this loops through it's rain and then it changes over so that freezing line is just about uh, say it's on 10 uh, right along 90 where temperatures are just at or slightly below freezing and then up north obviously it is freezing We've got freezing rain up around Ball Verde, Canyon Lake, New Braunfels, San Marcos, all along 35. So you do want to watch it on some of those elevated roadways. Same thing on 281 and then also heading up in toward portions of the hill country. Again, here's the freezing line basically right along 1035. Port S.A. is freezing. Rio Medina is not. And in your backyard, it may or may not be freezing. We do have a wind chill on top of that to uh, to deal with. So here's the computer model, and this is what's going to be very interesting. We continue to keep some of the uh, freezing rain around here, and it's going to be that line that's basically right along northern Bear County. Now, it's going to be off and on throughout the day today. As we go into the overnight hours and tomorrow, that's when things are going to start to pick up as far as the intensity of the rain. I think that's when we're going to be seeing a lot more in the way of some freezing rain up in portions of the uh, hill country. <coughs> Excuse me. And that will be the situation throughout the morning hours. Then that is going to continue on through the morning tomorrow. And then it's finally going to start to uh, taper off just a little bit. And we will be getting into tomorrow night. Still some rain around here, still some freezing rain. So today temperatures here in town at the airport, it's going to be that very fine line right there, right along freezing, right along the freezing line, right at 32 degrees. So we'll still keep some of that light rain around in the form of just rain down to the south, freezing on elevated surfaces further up to the north. Temperatures aren't going to be moving throughout the day. We'll maybe may, uh, gain a couple of degrees, topping off at 35 perhaps. And again, that's here in town. Further up to the north, temperatures are going to be staying right below freezing. So the elevated surfaces, we're really going to have to be careful with those. And it's that low out there still to the west of us, which is the culprit pumping in all this moisture. And then we have this very, very shallow layer of freezing air at the surface. You go up couple thousand feet. It's very, very warm up there, but anything that falls then goes through this freezing layer right down here at the surface and then freezes on contact. So at noon, 33 degrees, rain and some freezing rain up to the north. And then later on this afternoon, we're going to make it up to 35. So not a big warm up whatsoever. Rain, more freezing rain. Now tomorrow, that's when I think we see most of the, the heavier rain and the heavier freezing rain, especially up to the north. Winter storm warning has been expanded to include Bear County and then counties to the east and southeast up until 6 o'clock Thursday morning. And then the watch has been pushed out ahead of that. And as far as the next seven days, like I said, I think the heaviest is going to be coming in here tomorrow especially in the overnight hours early tomorrow morning. Then it's going to start to taper off. We'll still have a little bit of leftover rain on Thursday. Then we go into the weekend. Looks fantastic once we get into Thursday afternoon and then Friday. The weekend looks very, very nice as well, but it's going to be the next basically 48 hours and especially I think tomorrow morning in the hill country. We're really going to have to watch it in those elevated surfaces, maybe tree limbs coming down, power lines, things like that. That's going to be a possibility because the heavier rain is going to start to move in then. Yeah. It's the next 48 hours. Yes, and it, like I said, especially tomorrow morning, overnight tonight, tomorrow morning. Okay, Mike, we'll look out for it. Thank you. 453, 32 degrees. Coming up next, Michael Jackson's nephew is set to play his uncle in an upcoming film. Plus, SZA sees more sizzle on the Billboard charts and sets a record. 456, Elton John seeing big success on his latest tour, plus the new Michael Jackson film finds its main star. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Elton John's Goodbye Yellow Brick Road Tour appears to be paved with gold bricks. Billboard says it's now the highest grossing tour in history. Over 278 shows, it's grossed $817.9 million, the first tour to break the $800 million mark. 
The previous highest earner was Ed Sheeran's Divide Tour, earning $776.4 million. Though Sheeran far outsold Elton when it comes to the number of tickets bought. And Elton's not done yet. He still has 51 shows to go on what we're told is his final tour. The upcoming Michael Jackson movie has found its king of pop, Jafar Jackson. Michael Jackson's nephew will play his uncle in the upcoming biopic titled Michael. The 26-year-old Jafar is Jermaine Jackson's son and a singer who put out a single in 2019. Jafar posted a pic of himself on social media practicing Michael's dance moves, writing that he's humbled and honored to be bringing his uncle's story to life. Lionsgate has said the film will address all aspects of Jackson's life, but it's not clear how deep it'll go into the controversies. A seventh straight week at number one on the Billboard 200 album chart for SZA's SOS. The last woman to top the chart for seven weeks was Taylor Swift with Folklore more than two years ago. I can buy myself flowers. And it's now two weeks on top for Miley Cyrus on the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart with her latest single, Flowers. And a happy birthday to Kerry Washington, the scandal star turning 46 today, while actor and singer Justin Timberlake is 42. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News. Los Angeles. 458, 32 degrees. A mixed bag of weather extremes across the country, while forecasters are warning of a significant icing event impacting at least 15 states, including Texas. We are seeing the other extreme in Florida, why they could see record breaking heat very soon. And deliberations could happen as early as today in the local case of an Air Force major accused of murdering his wife. Find out what Andre McDonald has admitted to the jury so far. And already a mess on the roadways. There's a look there at Highway 281 at Loop 410. We'll be checking with our Stephen Cavazos very soon. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. We are still picking up frozen precipitation on radar. A little bit of rain down to the south. This is going to continue off and on throughout the day, and there's a whole lot more to come. We're live in the Storm Chaser in Bernie, keeping track of the situation. For now, just a glaze on elevated surfaces, but we know that this is going to be worsening, especially throughout the day today and into Wednesday. I'll have the latest on conditions in the Hill Country coming up. And already a mess on the roadways, but we can expect for this Tuesday morning commute. We're going to have the latest coming up. And outside with live cam, we've got team coverage of this event. Mike's full forecast coming up as we look ahead to next weekend. But first, we have to get through the next two or three days. Good morning, everybody. We are wrapping up the month of January on an icy note. It is Tuesday, the 31st. Thanks for joining us today. I uh, hope you've had a good morning so far. And if you have to go somewhere, definitely bundle up. And take your time. We'll talk traffic in a moment. Straight to Mike for the latest. And uh, once again, well, first of all, look in the corner of your screen right there where it says 32 degrees. Yeah, a lot of readings are right at 32. We're that very fine line cutting basically right across the San Antonio area and Bear County. And this is obviously a very important uh, scenario to keep in mind where there is that dividing line down around Floresville going down 37. That is just in the form of rain. Then you go up into the hill country and it is being detected as frozen precipitation. Now, the other thing to really take note of is the roads and the surface temperatures. Notice how most of the uh, roads here in and around town surface temperatures are above freezing 37 degrees right there but then you go up into portions of the hill country and it's starting to get a little bit cooler but still slightly above freezing that's down here at the surface because the ground is still fairly warm so things are not freezing on contact on surface streets but it is the elevated surfaces that we're going to have to watch out for because those are sitting up in this air that is below freezing as of right now burning stage at 30 degrees 30 Balverde, and then we got some upper 20s there in portions of the hill country. Yeah, it is breezy out there. It's going to stay breezy today. So we do have wind chills to deal with down in the uh, 20s, low 20s around here, and in some cases may even touch into the upper teens. The winter storm warning has been expanded, does include Bear County and almost all the surrounding counties. And then the winter storm watch down here to the southeast. This has also been extended. It had been uh, 
forecast to expire, scheduled to expire at noon tomorrow. Now it's extended into 6 o'clock Thursday morning, so we'll still have a little bit of freezing precipitation around here, but it does look like that the brunt of everything is going to be to overnight tonight and then tomorrow morning. And uh, as far as the allergens, mold is high, mountain cedar is on the moderate side, and again, we are going to continue to see temperatures hovering right around freezing, give or take a little bit over the next couple of days. Sarah Spivey is up in Bernie and and uh, what is the very latest up there? We were talking about surface temperatures earlier, Sarah. What's going on? Yeah, it's uh, below freezing here. It's uh, in the upper 20s, right near 30 degrees in spots around Bernie. We are in uh, the town center of Bernie here. And, and again, the main things we're seeing right now are elevated surfaces covered with ice. Roads are fine for now, but we know that that's going to change, especially later on today and on Wednesday. I want to show you some elevated surfaces here that are covered with ice. This is a bench here in Bernie. You can see uh, the tiny little icicles starting to form. There was a rain shower, a freezing rain shower uh, shortly before 3 p.m. And I bet you some of these rain droplets, uh, freezing rain droplets are from that shower. I want you to be careful if you're walking around and about north of 1604 today. And this is the reason why. Uh, over here, we've got uh, just this metal grate and it is completely way too slippery. If I was to put my full weight on this, it would definitely end up slipping and sliding. So please, if you live north of 1604 and into the hill country, use some caution where you're walking today. Uh, we'll be continuing to be live here uh, in Bernie uh, and keeping track of the situation. I think next up we're going to go a little bit closer to the highway and see what things look like out there. Reporting live from Bernie, meteorologist Sarah Spivey, Steven. What do the roads look like? I heard there was a bit of a, a, a disruption there at 281. Yeah, Sarah, that's right. Let's get a look here. Unfortunately, things don't look too good at 281 South at Loop 410 West. Uh, getting a wide shot at Transguide, we can see plenty of flashing lights out there. And I did speak to our friends at Transguide. I can tell you that this is being reported along the access road, and that's really what we're seeing. Uh, unfortunately, we're not sure of the details behind this crash, but it's safe to assume that uh, it's obviously going to cause some delays for drivers that may be traveling along Loop 410 Westbound. So you can see those flashing lights out there. Uh, unfortunately, details are so limited at this time, but we are working to find some information. We'll bring it to you as that it be, as it becomes available. But let's get you to the map because where that's been pinpointed is Loop 410 westbound at Airport Boulevard. Now we're not picking up any delays here in those westbound lanes, but I'll be tracking it closely and hopefully in the next few minutes I'll have a better update. But uh, for now, let's give you a view of the metropolitan area. Just a quiet start to this Tuesday morning. Now uh, again, when I was talking to our friends at Transguide, we, they had a shot at 10 at Comfort for us. Now there's no reports of any ice out there in terms of our uh, slush, but we are keeping a close eye on it. We're going to be monitoring those areas throughout the morning, especially north of 1604. And if you are going to be traveling in this early, make sure that you use caution, drive safe out there. That journey from Bernie should be about 26 minutes along I-10 eastbound. So again, take your time. 28 minutes on 281 southbound, a little bit of a delay, but no worries there. And right now coming in from New Braunfels, we're looking at a 26 minute drive time to the Alamo City. But let's get back to this mess here along 281 south at loop 410 west again this is along the frontage road but uh, it does look like it's causing a bit of a delay for drivers out there we'll keep a close eye on it and again hopefully have that better update in the next few minutes mark stuff thank you Stephen. we are keeping an eye on school closures and delays so you can scan this qr code code on your screen right now to take you directly to the list on our website at kset.com we're also going to be showing you the list of districts on the ticker at the bottom of your screen this cold snap not just impacting road travel, but those flying as well, especially those headed to North Texas. Our Sarah Costa is live at San Antonio International Airport. And Sarah, are we seeing canceled or delayed flights out of San Antonio? Good morning, Mark and Steph. Yeah, those cancellations and delays, the impact isn't significantly terrible, but we do have some. We have about 14 total, and most of them are out of the Dallas area. Uh, but here is what we know so far. So this is what, according to the San Antonio International Airport website, I just checked it a couple minutes ago. There are a total of 14 cancellations and two delays, seven cancellations and departures and one delay in departures, seven cancellations and arrivals and one delay out of the arrival. So 
We did check inside the airport, still looking relatively calm, not seeing any long lines at the counters or security, but it is still early. The majority of the flight impacts are going to be impacting more of the North Texas area, particularly the Dallas Fort Worth area. Southwest did put out a statement last night regarding this winter storm with a list of possible impacted cities and San Antonio is on that list. Southwest says, quote, customers are holding reservations to from through the cities listed through today and February 1st may rebook the original class of service or travel standby within 14 days of the original travel date without paying any additional charges. Now, it is important to note that the majority of those cancellations are out of Dallas and they all are all Southwest flights except for one. Reporting live from the San Antonio International Airport, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, fire in the second floor of a home forced some evacuations overnight. Happened around 1 a.m. in the 200 block of Dilworth near south of New Braunfels on San Antonio's east side. Fire crews say the fire started on a second floor of what looks like an apartment attached to a house. Firefighters put it out quickly and everyone got out safely. There's no word yet on a cause. The Air Force major accused of murdering his wife takes the stand in his own defense. Andre McDonald admitted to a jury that he and his wife fought, but said his wife, Andreen, attacked him first. Deliberations could happen as soon as today. Now, he claims Andreen was having an affair and trying to start a business with his assets. In February of 2019, Andre says the couple argued all day before the fight turned fatal. When she comes, she's like throwing like some punches in, in between the scuffle. I remember like grabbing her, like tripping her over one of my legs, and then she like falls, and that's when I kicked her like twice when she was when she fell. Right now, Andre McDonald faces a murder charge. We're going to continue to follow this trial on air and online, and our KSET Plus streaming app and our YouTube channel. 510, 32 degrees. As we deal with the colder weather here, we're going to show you the cities across the nation that have officially recorded their warmest January on record. Back outside with live cam. Yeah, take some extra time this morning here in the city, especially on those bridges to the overpasses. But a shout out to Tech Cruise, who've been busy since yesterday, making sure our freeways are safe. We'll be right back. 514, some breaking news. We just got the first big school closure here in San Antonio. An update, Northeast ISD has just announced they'll be closed today due to inclement weather. You can track all the closures at ksat.com. Meanwhile, the extremes are stretching from coast to coast. And as ABC's Andrew Dembert reports, temperatures range from 60 degrees below zero in the west to historic warmth in Florida. This morning, a mixed bag of weather extremes across the country. From a days-long ice storm to high temperatures threatening to break records, forecasters are warning of a significant icing event affecting at least 15 states from Texas to Ohio. Three quarters of an inch of ice could fall in the coming days. In San Antonio, workers for the first time are using beet juice as a de-icing agent, spraying a combination of brine and beet juice on roads and bridges, saying it's less corrosive than salt. The storms have already made travel treacherous. This truck left dangling off a highway in Colorado. It comes as record-breaking heat is possible in Florida. Temperatures near Miami are expected to hit the mid-80s, and it gets even hotter there by the weekend. Several U.S. cities have officially recorded their warmest January on record from South Texas to Maine, and several cities in the Northeast have yet to see any measurable snowfall this winter. Not only have we had the warmest January on record here in New York City, but also for dozens of sites through the Northeast, back to Texas, Louisiana, up to Michigan and Wisconsin. But we also have now broken the latest measurable snow on record and we'll keep breaking it with no snow in sight. But there's no shortage of winter in some states. Utah is experiencing some of the coldest temperatures in years. At Peter's Sinks, a natural sinkhole in northern Utah, a low of negative 60 degrees was recorded yesterday. And in the Midwest today, a wind chill temperature of 26 degrees below zero is expected in Minneapolis. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Okay, also just announced shirts, Cibolo Universal City ISD schools and offices will be closed all day due to the wintry weather. Time now is 516 and for now 32 degrees here. Let's look out there with Trans Guy looking over at I-10 at Comfort. Uh, can't see too much there, but we've had some, uh, you know, icy conditions in some areas. We're going to go check in with our Stephen Cavazos very soon.
gift sets for every love, starting at $99. My most important kitchen tool, my brain. So I choose Nareva Plus. Unlike some others, Nareva Plus is a multitasker supporting six key indicators of brain health to help keep me sharp. Nareva, think bigger. In America, we celebrate the big game with big grains. But there's one grain to crack open Sunday morning. Oats. Free grain before the big game with Quaker Oats. Time check is now. Uh, we're approaching 520. I uh, want to make a quick mention here that New Braunfels ISD has uh, canceled classes today. We're going to have more on that a little bit later on. And of course, a uh, full list of closures is also on our website at ksat.com. But let's get a look here at 10 at Comfort. Now, I mentioned earlier that our friends at TransGuide have uh, put this shot on our wall so that way we can take a look at the conditions out there. Now, it's obviously very dark, but I can report that we're not seeing any slush or ice, at least just yet here in this portion of uh, I-10. But we're going to watch it closely throughout the morning. However, things aren't looking too good along 281 uh, at, right near the airport. 410 westbound at Airport Boulevard. We do have a crash that was reported out there. Now, it does look like crews are still out and, of course, working to clear this scene up. It is causing a little bit of a delay for drivers, but remember, this is on the frontage road. Hopefully, everyone is doing okay out there, but it's, a, it's an area that we're going to have to watch closely throughout the morning. Now, a wide look at the map really just shows that it's still pretty quiet right now. We know that a few classes have been canceled today, so that may help with the traffic. But uh, a lot of counties are encouraging folks that if you don't have to travel, you might as well just stay home uh, unless you and if you do just make sure that you drive safe out there. You can see there at 10 at Comfort, although it is still pretty dark, uh, folks are making their way on by with caution, driving slowly through areas like that. Uh, but Mike, uh, no major incidents reported outside of uh, San Antonio just yet, but I'm watching those areas closely. Okay, which is very good news. By the way, as far as school closures are concerned, we are going to continue to update them on our website. So that's going to be the uh, best place to go. And also the uh, ticker right down there at the bottom of the screen. One thing to point out over here at 10 at 410, there's the elevated roadways. Everything now traffic's moving along cautiously, but it is moving along. So temperatures are still right around freezing, maybe a degree above that. Haven't seen any impacts as of yet. This is what radar is picking up as of right now and a little bit of frozen precipitation up there in portions of the hill country and then a little closer in. Notice how this is all just in the form of rain and just because this is frozen precipitation doesn't mean it is freezing when it hits the surface because surface temperatures are still above freezing it's the elevated surfaces like Sarah Spivey was pointing out uh, that, you know, benches, uh, power lines, trees, things like that, overpasses. Those are going to be the ones to ice up first. So we don't have a lot of precipitation that's being picked up on radar, although a lot of it is very, very fine mist. And that can just put that little tiny coating of glaze on things on elevated surfaces. So the freezing rain impacts, as we were talking about, I mean, this is covering most all of the state, especially up there around Dallas. If you are planning on doing any traveling up to the north, you definitely want to think twice about that. And then in this is through tomorrow, and it looks like the the brunt of the, the heavy rain and obviously then more heavy freezing rain is going to be coming in the overnight hours and early tomorrow. So we are going to have big impacts in portions of the hill country, and this is through midday tomorrow. And we're looking at ice accumulation, half to an inch of rain, about three quarters of an inch on average, very dangerous travel conditions. And then there's that small band right there, Fair Oaks Ranch right there along the uh, northern Bear County line where we're going to have some elevated surfaces with icing, some power outages too. We're going to have to watch out, especially in, in the hill country for icing on branches, power lines, things like that. Minor impacts here in town. And again, the, the dividing line basically is along I-10 where we're going to have icing to the north of that and primarily just liquid precipitation and not freezing precipitation down to the south of that. Here's a computer model, and uh, it's got that scenario where the dividing line is just about along I-10 where things may be freezing up up there to the north. And again, this kind of uh, paints it in with a bit of a broad brush, but that's what we can take away from this is that dividing line there mid northern Bear County. And this is going to be through the day today and it's not going to be raining constantly. We are going to have sort of periods off and on here and there. Then we get into the overnight hours and this is I think going to be the biggest problem around here is when we get some heavier rain and even 
late last week in the weekend we were talking about how Wednesday was the day that was going to have some of the, the heavier rain around here and that still looks like it's going to be the situation but then that heavier rain mixed in obviously with the freezing temperatures and as things continue to stay at or slightly below freezing then on some of the surfaces, perhaps in portions of the hill country, you could get a little bit of accumulation. But this is going to be in the overnight hours tonight and then uh, tomorrow. And this will continue to go on throughout the morning hours tomorrow. Finally start to taper off a little bit as we go into late day. But still, we do have the winter storm warning in effect even through 6 o'clock Thursday morning. I'm going to show you that in a second. 33 degrees. So we are going to be... Just about holding steady throughout the day. A little bit cooler up to the north. Temperatures add slightly below freezing. Air temperatures, not necessarily surface temperatures. Big, big difference there. 35 later on this afternoon. Rain and some of that freezing rain up to the north on some of the elevated surfaces. There's the winter storm warning. It has been expanded. Includes Bear County all the way over to uh, Gonzales County through again Thursday morning at six o'clock and then the winter storm watch ahead of that and temperatures don't move all that much. So we are going to have somewhat of an extended period, especially in the hill country below freezing temperatures and this is going to be the heaviest rain tomorrow starts to taper off a little bit of leftover Thursday and then got great looking the weather going in here coming in here. I should say for the weekend more coming up after this. All right, folks, uh, a lot's happening here just in the last few minutes. We're having a tough time keeping up, but we have a big update on school closures in just the past few minutes. Here's what we've got, and these are the newer, bigger districts that are coming in to the San Antonio area. Right now, all these are listed on ksat.com, ticker bottom of your screen. Okay, so these are closures, folks. Northeast ISD, Shirt Cibolo, Universal City ISD, New Braunfels added to the list, Seguin added to the list. Here's the big one, biggest district to San Antonio Metro, that is North Side. ISD is now listing as closed. Judson's also on here. Now, San Antonio ISD is listed here, but we've got a question about that. So we're going to do a little bit of research. We're going to get back to you on that one as well. That's right. And we are keeping an eye on the school closures and delays. You can scan this QR code to take you directly to the list on KSET.com. We're going to be showing you the list of districts on the ticker at the bottom of your screen throughout the morning. And keep in mind, sometimes we can update them faster here than we can on our website, but we are getting to it. We've got a full team working on all of this, so please be patient. We will get to it. 529, 31 degrees. Outrage from victims' families has stopped the documentary on the Robb Elementary School shooting from being shown in a Uvalde movie theater. Find out why some are still pushing for the film to be released anyway. Trans guide folks, settle in for the long haul here. We're not talking about this morning, but over several days of some tricky weather around here due to cold temperatures and moisture in the area. Stephen and Mike both have us covered. We'll talk to them coming up. The winter storm warning has been expanded, has been extended. We are going to see some frozen precipitation today, but it looks like the heaviest is going to be uh, coming tomorrow. More on that in just a couple of moments. And the commute can be tricky, but we're keeping a close eye on the roadways here in the traffic lab. What you can expect for this Tuesday morning commute in the next few minutes. A documentary on the Robb Elementary School shooting will no longer be shown in a Uvalde movie theater after outrage from the victims' families, while some parents still want the film to be shown. And let's look out there with live cam. We're starting at a cold 31 degrees, very, very cold out there, and, you know, Road conditions not looking the best. We're going to be checking in with Stephen and Mike throughout the morning. And good morning to you. It is Tuesday, January 31st. Uh, very busy team here at KSAT trying to keep everything updated. We've had a lot happen just in the last few minutes. We're having trouble staying updated, but we're working as best as we can. Here are the latest closures that we've got into our newsroom. And Steph and I are going to share these. Northeast ISD, Shirts, Cibolo, Universal City ISD, and New Braunfels ISD. Also on the list, Seguin ISD, Northside ISD, Judson ISD, and recently SA ISD announcing they're also closed. And just in now, November. Navarro ISD also on the closure list. So we're keeping an eye on all the closures. We're going to put them all on this. Uh, so this QR code will take you right to our website where we have a full running list of all the districts that are affected. We're also running it there at the bottom of your screen. So just kind of keep an eye on that. We're updating those as quickly as possible. But a uh, pretty rapid turn of events here this morning, Mike Oster Hage. Yeah, you know, it happened very quickly, of course, uh, Sunday night into yesterday, and we started getting the winter storm warnings and 
and watch is posted. And then in the overnight hours, we had another big change, and that was the extension of this winter storm warning and the, the watch up until 6 o'clock Thursday morning. It had been scheduled to expire at noon tomorrow, but this is going to continue on. It has also been expanded to include Bear County and counties off to the east over in there toward Gonzales County. And you can see North San Antonio and the north side of Bear County anywhere from a tenth to a quarter of an inch, which doesn't sound like much, but that's in icing situation. So it takes nothing to put that coat of ice on anything. So that's going to be the northern portion of uh, Bear County and then go up into the hill country. We're looking at a quarter inch to even three quarters of an inch and that starts to build up then on tree limbs on power lines and that can cause some some big problems. So here's uh, again a closer look at the uh, winter storm warning and all of the metropolitan area with the exception of Atascosa County is under that winter storm warning but winter, but Atascosa County of course is under the uh, winter storm watch. So here is what it looks like on radar right now and it's not that impressive as far as the amount and as you can see right here in the southeast portion of Bear County and Wilson County we are seeing just what's coming down in the form of rain then you go a little bit to the north and the dividing line is just about you know, on either side, give or take right along 10 and 90. And then that turns over into some frozen precipitation. Now it's the elevated surfaces and we're going to be checking in a little bit later on with Sarah Spivey up there in Bernie, but she's been pointing out how even um, their benches in the park are starting to freeze up and some of the street signs, some things that are elevated, not down at the surface because the surface is still fairly warm, relatively speaking, because we've had 70s, mid 70s on Sunday. So the ground is not cooled off that quickly as of yet. Despite the fact we do have freezing temperature at San Antonio, Port SA, Randolph, and then up into the hill country. So it is those elevated surfaces where some of that light rain that's falling in. What's being picked up on radar is not telling the whole story because when I was coming into work this morning, once again, it was that very, very fine mist out there, which is almost too light to be picked up on radar. We do have wind chills to deal with and look at that down to 21 in Kerrville. Same thing, Bernie stage for the wind chill. And this is going to be the situation throughout the day because temperatures aren't really going to be moving all that much, if at all. Mole high mountain cedar is on the moderate side. Rain and some freezing rain this morning. It's going to be sort of off and on here and there throughout the day. Temperatures, especially in the hill country, aren't going to be getting above freezing. So you will have things kind of soaking in that freezing air, if you will, for a good 24, 36 hours in through a good chunk of the day tomorrow. And then overnight tonight, I think is when we really have to watch out. Heavier rain and subsequently heavier freezing rain is going to start to work its way on in here. Then we're going to start to clear on out to Thursday afternoon and going into the weekend. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Hitting the roads. Well, maybe not the best idea. Yeah. What's the latest, Stephen? You know, uh, Mike, uh, that's something that we've been discussing here in the traffic lab. And I do also want to make note here that uh, for our neighbors up in Austin, they've had a pretty tricky commute. According to the Austin Fire Department, several of their overpasses are reported to be iced already. And even several vehicles have been reported to be stuck on those flyovers due to ice or multiple collisions. So they've had their hands busy. But the story's a little bit different here in town. Let's show you what the commute looks like. Now, no issues are reported here in San Antonio on those main highways. You can check out US 90 at Nogalitos. Thankfully, it's been off to a quiet start here in town, but we are keeping our eye on areas like I-10 at Bernie. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a moment, but you can really just see that uh, we're not really picking up a whole lot of uh, ice out there, but we are watching the roads and just seeing traffic moving by without any trouble. More on that in just a second, but let's get you back here to this situation along Loop 410 westbound at Airport Boulevard. We did have a crash that was reported out there a little bit earlier. Now, good news, that crash has already cleared out. So if you are traveling through that area for whatever reason, uh, you won't encounter any of those flashing lights. Let's give you a big, big view of the metropolitan area. So lots of green on the screen, which means a lot of folks are probably still at home. And that still may be the case with a lot of these closures that we've been reporting for school. So that may help with the commute a little bit later this morning. Now, if you plan on traveling into San Antonio, I would say still take your time. You're in the green coming in from Seguin along I-10 westbound. 29 minutes is what you can expect. It's a little more than half an hour. So so it's the usual drive time along 87 northbound traveling in from Lavernia and right now for our friends down in Floresville it should take you about 29 minutes to get to the Alamo City. But let's get it back here on Transguide uh, 281 at San Pedro. You can see a few of those droplets right there on those Transguide cameras. But meteorologist Sarah Spivey has been keeping us updated on what's going on in Bernie. 
Hey Steven, so yeah, we are just south of downtown Bernie now. We're along I-10 right at Scenic Loop in between Fair Oaks Ranch and Bernie. And we parked in front of this Bill Miller and there is a lot of ice on a tree here. This Bill Miller area must have gotten a, a decent shower here because that tree is completely covered in ice as well as the ground around it. Now also we're right by a car dealership and you'll notice too that there's a ton of ice on these cars. Elevated surfaces, that's where we're seeing that ice stick. Also notice how windy it is here. Winds are gusting up to 25 miles per hour. There's definitely a wind chill. And uh, I'm happy to report that our friends at TxDOT are hard at work. In fact, just about 10 minutes ago, they were uh, on this bridge here, the scenic loop uh, bridge on I-10 treating the roads, but we're still seeing cars streaming across these bridges and overpasses up here in the hill country. So please use extra caution if you're traveling this morning, especially over bridges like the one behind me. It's great that Texad is treating the roads, but we know that this is just the start of things. It's going to get pretty icy, especially later today and tomorrow. So use some caution on the bridges and overpasses at the moment, especially if you're north of 1604, have to travel into San Antonio or out of San Antonio. You're going to want to use some caution the further north you head. Reporting from Bernie, meteorologist Sarah Spivey. Back to you guys. Thank you, Sarah. You can track the weather on your phone. Just scan the QR code to download the KSAT weather app. So all the data is put in by our local meteorologist. So it is tailored to our area. More on the weather and traffic coming up, but there is other news this morning. Documentary on the Robb Elementary School shooting will no longer be shown at a Uvalde movie theater after outrage from the victims' families. Those families granted a first screening Monday before it was set to be released Friday. The documentary includes interviews from six child survivors in room 112. They share graphic details of what they experienced and saw. Details that many of the victims' families had not heard before. We spoke with the filmmaker who defended robbed despite being served with a cease and desist from the victim's families. Felicia Martinez and Eva Dulia Orta, who lost their son, Javier and Rogelio, don't want anyone else to see the film. I don't want this video out. I don't want it out. I don't either. It's going to bring back memories and we don't want that. Hardful memories. Ruben Torridge Jr.'s daughter, Chloe, shared her story of survival. Her 911 calls were played twice. While well, he understands why the families of the victims don't want the movie to go forward, he does. Right now, the film's website is still scheduled to be screened at six cities across Texas in late February. And the time now is 542 and 31 degrees for now. If you're a fan of the popular energy drink Celsius, you could be due some money. We'll tell you about a new class action lawsuit. And let's look out there with live cam. Things very cold this morning, 31 degrees. Uh, we are tracking any school closures right there at the bottom of your screen, and we'll be right back. And welcome back. It's about 5.45 in your morning consumer headlines. Showtime is changing its name for the first time in its 47-year history. The premium TV network is integrating with Paramount Streaming Service and will become Paramount Plus with Showtime. Now, later this year, Paramount executives promise a more compelling offering to consumers versus subscribing to each service separately. Celsius fitness drinks have gotten fairly popular lately. Now the energy drink, drink company has settled a class action suit over claims about the ingredients. Celsius had promoted the beverage as being free of preservatives, but it turns out their products do in fact contain citric acid. If you bought Celsius beverages or mix any time from January 2015 to November 23rd of last year, you can get a payout. You have to have proof of purchase, such as a receipt, to receive up to $250. And time now is 545 and 31 degrees for now. So far so good here in the city, but please be careful on those uh, elevated highway overpasses and exchanges around town. Even more of a problem as you head up towards Austin and places like Johnson City and Kerrville and Comfort. We're tracking all of it for you right here on GMSA. Just in, Alamo Heights ISD has just announced that uh, classes are canceled today. That's along with Northside ISD, NEISD, 
SAISD and Shirt Cibolo Universal City Independent School District. Yeah, the list has been growing and there are many more. All the school closures are listed right now on our website at KSET.com. Well, we're kind of busy, but the really busy guys this morning are Stephen Cavazos and Mike Osterhage. Yeah, I'll, I'll start us off here, guys. Uh, thankfully, here in town, things haven't been uh, quite uh, busy on these roadways, but we know that our friends up in Austin, our neighbors up 35, have really been dealing with a lot on the roadways. I mentioned this a little bit earlier that uh, the Austin Fire Department has reported that there were several crashes and folks stuck on bridges and overpasses due to some ice that was reported on those uh, er in those areas. Pardon me. If you plan on traveling up to Austin for whatever reason this um, early in the morning, make sure that you plan your commute ahead of time. I'm tracking things closely, but here in it looks like there was a stalled vehicle somewhere off of 90, but uh, you can see the commute there along 281 at San Pedro doesn't look too bad, even at Hildebrandt. But notice there are a few droplets on those trans guide cameras, so just make sure that you drive safe this morning. Getting you to the map, uh, it's just been a quiet start here in town. Thankfully, we're not picking up any big issues, but we mentioned bridges and overpass. Uh, make sure that you watch out for those areas. Thankfully, no closures reported here in town, but according to drivetexas.org, we are seeing some ice reported a little bit further up north of Bear County, areas that I will also watch closely. But uh, right now, it does look like another issue popped up here off of 35 at Loop 1604. We'll find out what's going on there uh, in just a moment. But Mike, again, uh, no major closures here in town just yet. Which is very good news. And you know, you're talking about bridges and overpasses and proofs in the pudding right here over there at 10 and 410. Everything is moving along very well. Obviously, the roads are damp. You got to you know take it easy with that. And this is what is showing up. And I use the word the phrase showing up on radar right now because there is a lot of mist out there. So that's just going to continue to make the road stamp. So here is and let me just uh, stop this. And as you can see, this is in the form of rain. You go up in towards Seguin and it is being picked up by radar as freezing precipitation, as well as that one little spot right there over there in northwest Bear County. And then, of course, out there in portions of the uh, the hill country where we still have some of this freezing rain. The other thing to really keep in mind and Sarah Spivey who's up right around uh, Bernie this morning had pointed this out earlier that the the surface temperatures are still very, very warm, relatively speaking. I mean, we still have these uh, readings here in the uh, 30s right now, 37 degrees. It does get cooler up there in portions of the hill country, obviously, but this is the down at the surface. So the roads are going to be fine. The ground is relatively warm. It's everything that is up in the air, like overpasses, like signs, like trees or power lines. And that's definitely going to be an issue over the next, especially 24 hours, I think going into tomorrow. So here's the uh, computer model. Again, the dividing line with temperatures is basically running right through Bear County. Uh, 32 degrees, 33, 31, just again, back and forth that that kind of fine line right there. Colder temperatures up there to the north. So accumulation on things like trees is definitely or elevated surfaces is going to be definitely an issue. Rain is going to be off and on throughout the day. It's not going to be raining constantly. But anything up to the north will be in the form of some frozen precipitation. It's going into then tonight where I think we really have to be on the lookout and then tomorrow morning because rain is going to be more widespread. It is going to be heavier and with those temperatures right around freezing, that's just going to continue to add up. So that's what we'll have to be on the lookout for in the overnight hours and tomorrow morning through at least about noon tomorrow and then things are going to start to taper off somewhat. So as far as the the freezing rain and the icing impacts, well, it's covering a good chunk of the state, basically north of San Antonio. But up there in portions of the hill country is where we are going to have the biggest impacts up there with ice accumulation up to three quarters of an inch, which doesn't sound like much, but when you think about an entire power line covered in that or a tree limb, that's a lot, a lot of weight. So that's going to be something that we have to uh, be on the lookout for. And then moderate impacts in that fine line there, northern Bear County and still northern Bear County. And where temperatures again, that that almost dividing line along 10, give or take, that's where we're going to have some minor impacts. And there may be some of the elevated surfaces that will be icing up somewhat and even watch it say, you know, we talk about the the roads, the overpasses, watch it on your if you got a deck or something like that. Watch it there because that could get slippery as well. Temperatures right now 32 at the airport at Port SA at Randolph and then up to the north and then there's that again that dividing line right there. We also have a pretty good breeze and so therefore we have wind chills. 
Yeah, it's cold out there and that's going to be the situation all day long with these temperatures that are going to be staying right around freezing, give or take a couple of degrees here and there and then those winds. So wind chills definitely something today. 33 degrees today at noon rain, a little bit of freezing rain, some of the elevated surfaces tree signs so forth are it's going to be freezing on contact and then 35 for a an afternoon temperature again the uh, winter storm warning remains in effect till six o'clock thursday morning i think we get the the brunt of it overnight and into tomorrow morning temperatures aren't going to be moving all that much if at all and staying below freezing in parts of the hill country then after that thursday afternoon through the weekend looks pretty nice and look at that all of a sudden back to 70 by sunday more after this Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we have to talk about the weather, the ice that is slicing across the nation, Texas to Tennessee, rounds of this stuff, and it is all fueled by this deep cold that could bring some of the coldest wind chills to New England in nearly 40 years. Also, some growing fallout from the Tyree Nichols case. We'll get into all the details there. We are in Memphis this morning, and we'll see those stories and so much more right here on GMA. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA, the cold weather is the story this morning. We have updates on all the school closures just ahead. We'll also tell you what you need to know to get ready to hit the road. And we'll let you know more about those flights impacted in and out of San Antonio International Airport. So far, so good here on the roads in San Antonio, but we do have a couple of incidents. Here's one at 35 and 1604. Traffic and weather, our top story this morning. More to come.